name is Bob Valvano with MRC. Uh, we're very excited to be the representatives for uh, Can Ice for New Jersey and the uh, and the Northeast. So I want to welcome everybody. I thank you so much for taking the time to come here today uh, to learn a little bit about the product. Okay, well, this is a synthetic ice surface. It's a poly polypropylene surface is a high density plastic that was developed by a chemical company down in actually uh, believe it or not in Tampa Florida and we've been waiting a few years to get the proper type of a surface that'll have the right friction coefficient that will be able to hold up under stress and be able to use for our purpose now we've got the perfect venue here to do this because we've got an outdoor arena we keep natural ice only from sometime in September until the beginning of April so for the rest of those months from April to September because we have a concrete floor there's really nothing that we can do in here we've tried roller hockey we've tried roller skating it just doesn't go people don't aren't, aren't interested in doing it so we were looking for something that would be great for the off season and make this a 12 month a year you know 12 month out of year venue the biggest impediment to kids skating, playing hockey, figure skating, is access to ice time. Everybody knows that. It's just hard to do it. Um, problem with hockey, I also do synthetic turf. We did the fields over here for, for Tommy there. Hockey is actually more of a, a surface dependent sport than, than, field, than a field sport like football or soccer, rugby, anything like that. So you really have to get the performance features nailed. Um, so you've really got three objectives. You've got to get the product skates like ice, puck handles very much like ice. Um, if you can overcome that first hurdle, next thing you got to do is figure out how do you put the stuff together. Um, because everybody knows I always used to blame it on a rut in the ice when I fell, particularly when someone would go around me. But uh, basically, you had to come up with a fastening system that would interlock properly, lie flat, pull the panels together, not move around, and actually. There's a million different ways to do that. We kind of came up with what we did. We had smart guys come up with it. My partner Danny and I were not technical dudes, but came up with an interlocking system that not only goes together mechanically, but is in a mechanical opposition to each other when they're on it. So that works pretty good. So we got something to skate it well. We had one, one piece of the puzzle in place. The second thing we had to do was to figure out a way to have panels that can lock together and stay in place and, and, and stay seamless virtually for the performance of a hockey or figure skating activity. So we have 11 youth hockey teams in our Old Bridge Junior Night Hockey Program under our jurisdiction. Right now, those 12 teams, till we put this surface down, we're doing what we call dry land training. So they'd go out to Lombardi Stadium, and they'd run the bleachers, or they'd run around the track, or they'd do push-ups in the field. And we were thinking, well, wait a minute. If we put down this synthetic surface, they can come in, lace up their skates, put on a pair of shorts and a T-shirt, put their hockey gloves on and a helmet, and get a tremendous physical workout on the ice. That's the beauty of it. This is not for playing games. This is for conditioning because it's what we call progressive resistance, where if you have more resistance in skating, it's the same technique. When they get on real ice next fall and winter, they're going to be flying, and they're not even going to realize the strength that they've improved. So for us, it was a perfect, perfect venue to make this a 12-month out-of-the-year arena, and we had a great clientele and our hockey kids to use it now what we also can do next year is if we want the town can actually open it up to outside recreation departments i mean we have our own recreation department we have 12 or 13 sites where we have kids in the summer they can come in on the, on the bus once or twice a week or everybody can use it once a week camp robin therapeutic recreation program they can come and use it once a week or twice a week the daycare program they can use it once or twice a week and then we can also sell it out for an hour at a time that if another recreation department let's say Matawan or East Brunswick wants to take their kids on a trip which is kind of a neat trip to be able to skate in shorts and a t-shirt in the summer they can book a trip with us we have the skates right here so we can actually make money it becomes a money maker for us because it's a very novel thing to do in the off season so for all those reasons it basically has turned a arena that was just a half a year arena into a full service full year arena that has the clientele to support it within and hopefully the out of town people that will also support it with recreation programs i've been involved with synthetic ice through a friend that introduced mike and i eight years ago and one of the things my background is obviously i played in the national hockey league for 14 years loved to score goals had to fight a few times back in the day but uh, when you look at John Pickle, my late father, Ernie Gare, was um, 
he was a bit of a business, a, a guy that understood uh, how to, you know, to help the game develop. Uh, he was part of the under-18 program in Canada. He also started hockey schools, started the first athletic scholarship hockey program when he was the athletic director at the University of Notre Dame in my hometown in Mills, British Columbia. So in saying that, I have a little bit of, uh, I hope some of his vision, and this is kind of what I've kind of pursued my myself towards this product. Uh, there are competitors out, and, and some of our past products um, certainly led us to this product, which I always felt we could improve upon. Technology does do that, um, and we have now a great manufacturing partner, and I really believe, when I used to shoot two, 300 pucks, my dad said, in order for me to play in the National Hockey League, you have to shoot pucks because you're a right winger and you have to have an asset. And one was working underneath my son, Daphne Nelson, shooting on a piece of plywood and waxing it with ski wax into an archery net 20 feet away. And, you know, I would do that. I would shoot, shoot, shoot. The difference there compared to what the ability young kids have with this product is the mechanics. Young Brandon and Gerard that I talked to earlier here, they've got their skates on. The difference is they can use their inside outside edges to improve their, their development. And I think that's why I got excited about this product so much. Coming to Old Bridge a month ago, skating on it for the first time with Bob um, and, and the installers have just put it down. The glide is what it's all about. It's all about the glide. And when you look at glide, and I'll show it a little later, how you can push. In the past, you could go on a push stride, maybe two feet on past synthetic ice surfaces are our competitors. I can go 10 to 20 feet. And I think that's the important part of you know developing young kids, developing the ability to see yourself almost like ice surface and we have that so we're excited again in saying that but um thank you again i mean this is this is this is a product that you can get out there and try it yourself and you know, as mike said you'll know uh the feel of it and and hopefully we can improve the areas younger players to become someday with the gentleman i'm going to introduce you next to they call him Mr. Devil, <laughs> as we all know. I skated against Kenny uh, early in his career. Uh, we have battled a few times. Uh, I know he's had an outstanding, um, you know, 20 seasons with the New Jersey Devils. I've been with him, friends of ours, in, in off-season activities, and it's great to have Kenny here. Three-time Stanley Cup champion, Kenny <laughs> His homework, as you said, dude. he's a friend, but uh, uh, a great National Hockey League goal scorer for many years. And yes, Danny had to scrap to you. had to take care of yourself. Yeah. My era, or a little later, in my the 90s, I came in the 80s. Yeah. They had guys that made to protect guys like Danny, but they didn't have that back no, They, they had to fight their own battles. <laughs> That's true. That's good, Dan. You know, it's a real pleasure to be here. I'm excited about it, Danny. Yeah, we want to get you out there. Great and, product. and the other thing is, see, I, I come out here, and I've got all my sweatsuit like he had on. He'll, he's going to watch it. I didn't it. realize how warm yeah. it I did it the first time with my Saber sweatsuit on. I was sweating for three hours after. That might be a good thing. Yeah, all right. yeah, yeah, we need a little workout. But I see New Jersey everywhere here. And I say, Kenny, would you mind coming down and helping out? And thank uh, as he always my does. Pleasure. I appreciate it. And we're, we're, we're glad to have Kenny down here. So. Yeah, thank you all. Appreciate it. Let's put the blades on. Feedback has been has been good. Uh, obviously, out here you're looking at Kenny and, and Danny, who are former uh, NHL skaters. Uh, they've skated on it. Some of my coaches and the the, the Oldbridge Junior Knights hockey program that we have under us are great skaters. They've been on it. They're good. The kids love it. You know, kids are kids. They adapt to everything. And so for them, um, if you asked one of our 10-year-old kids, uh, what would you rather do? Would you go out rather go out at seven o'clock at night? and run the bleachers and run around the track, or would you rather put your hockey skates on and come and skate on the synthetic ice? You know, they say, my God, I want to be on that ice anytime. 
and they've adapted very well. Actually, to me, it's a lot easier for the little guys because they're lighter. The, the friction is less for a little guy that's maybe 100 pounds than it is for somebody that's an adult 200 pounds. Uh, so they, they adapt to anything. It's great for them, and it's a great training tool for them. Obviously, on this ice, we never envision any games because obviously you can't. It's too hot. You can't have full hockey equipment on. People would be passing out before they even got on the ice. But we always envision it as a training aid exactly for practice and for power skating training, positioning drills, shooting drills, uh, no games and full equipment, just in hockey shorts and a T-shirt, hockey gloves, their stick and a helmet, and just to work on their conditioning and power skating drills. So uh, it's a great addition to our program for us, too. That was really good. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think, and the mayor and I were just talking, we have, for the hockey program, and we have uh, learned to skate hockey for our hockey program in the fall. Uh, Buster, one of the things we were thinking about was because it's easier to stand up. If you go on somebody that's a ranked beginner and they put on skates and they try to stand on real ice, it's very slippery. I mean, we have, we have what we call starter lessons for all the... Uh, the um, figure skating lessons that we have, which basically you have a starter lesson. We find out whether the child at whatever age even wants to skate, whether he can put skates on or stand up on the ice and likes it enough to continue. So they have to pass a starter lesson. But for hockey, too, you have to figure, you know, we start young when they're five and six years old. And if you start in the cold weather on ice, sometimes even if they want to play, they're uncomfortable. It's cold. They're frozen. They don't want to be out there. If you start them in the summertime on this surface where they don't have to be out there with just a helmet on and you can begin to teach them there and get them interested, then I think you're over the hump as far as them wanting to continue in the program. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Okay, so just go over again the season, like what any of those tours. Okay, the, the season basically is we're going to take this product down. It was installed in early July. Uh, we were hoping to have it sooner, but it wasn't fabricated in time. From Tampa, Florida is where the factory is, which is uh, interesting. It's in a warm weather climate that did this. Uh, but uh, it was put down in July. We'll have to take it down the week of Labor Day. So Labor Day, Monday, that week, it'll take us probably two days to take it down. It'll be marked this time on the underneath because it's like putting it, when we put it back together the next year, it'll be like a giant jigsaw puzzle. So the only thing that's the hard part is the corners that are all curved. They'll have to be marked so we put it in the right place as we put it back together. It'll probably take about, uh, because of the marking, it'll probably take two days to take it down. From here on out, it will only take us like a day to put it down and a day to take it up. And we have storage trailers that we're going to put it in right outside adjacent to the arena that we will store it in for safekeeping. Uh, the weather won't affect it, but it was just we want to keep it safe and secure and locked up. So the, re the real ice will be down probably by, it will start making it like September 12th. Uh, it'll be ready to be used by our hockey teams uh, probably by September 20th. And then we will leave the real ice down all the way through the winter season and we'll start melting the real ice down probably sometime in April. The reason that we do it in April is because uh, we're dictated by the New Jersey Youth Hockey Program when we can have tryouts for the following year. Now, if I had my way, I'd have the tryouts probably like the third week in March and shut the arena down by the end of March. We have to usually leave it open till up maybe a close to April 20th because that's when New Jersey hockey dictates that we have to, they don't want us to have a jump on anybody else. I fought them, didn't work. So we basically have to leave the ice down for an extra three and a half weeks just to, just to accommodate our tryouts for the following year for our 11 youth hockey teams. Yeah, well, that's that, good you said that, Mary. I think one of the things that I thought was always neat would be we wouldn't do it every week, but, you know, for the months of, say, June, July, and August, we thought about having, like, on a Friday night, which are usually is our biggest ice skating night during the regular natural ice season through the winter, is having something like, you know, let our programming people put together, like, a, have something called like a luau on ice, a luau on skates, where people come with, a, they get a leg and they get a, a Hawaiian shirt and shorts, and we'll rent them the skates or they bring their own skates and then have, just like you would a public session with music and everything that you would during a natural ice, and have that maybe at least once a month 
and have a couple hundred people there to do that. And I think that would be kind of a neat thing. That and are using it for our recreation programs, also probably uh, renting it out to other local recreation programs that want to take their kids on a very interesting and novel trip. <laughs>